In October on Roanoke County Today, we'll learn about the new used building material permit citizens will need soon, plus a visit to Waldron Park. This and more coming up on Roanoke County Today. Volunteer firefighters respond to all types of emergencies. Volunteer firefighters fight fires. Volunteer firefighters save lives. Do you have what it takes? Visit RoanokeCountyVA.gov slash FRVolunteer or call 540-777-8706 to become a Roanoke County Fire and Rescue Volunteer Firefighter. Roanoke Valley Television RVTV Channel 3 is on Facebook. Go to www.rvtv.org and click on the Facebook icon to like RVTV3 today. Your government and educational access station. I'm Gray Craig and today I have with me Doug Blunt who is the director of Roanoke County Parks, Recreation and Tourism. And Doug, I understand mm -hmm. there's some great news about Explore Park lately. Can you fill us in? Yes, Gray. It, we're very excited to announce that the Virginia Recreation Facilities Authority and the Roanoke County Board of Supervisors have entered into a 99-year lease of Explorer Park to Roanoke County. Wow, that's, that's impressive. It really is. Now, what does this mean? for the county and for the park itself? Well, for especially for our citizens, it's gonna open up 1,100 acres of additional recreation, uh, passive and open space that we currently don't have. Uh, it will also allow us to be able to expand our hiking trails. We're also gonna be able to extend the Runnick River Greenway uh, from the parkway all the way down through Explore Park. Right. Um, are there any plans right now that you have in mind of things you'd like to do with the park or programs or activities you'd like to see in a park in well, the coming months? We would like to, uh, uh, several things that is on our agenda to take a look at and research. We'd love to see uh, a uh, campground at uh, Explore Park. We'd like to see some type of uh, canopy tour, ropes course at the park. We would like to be able to expand uh, our hiking and biking trails. And then we'd also like to see uh, family programming taking place, such as summer camps, uh, activities for mom, dad, the kids to be able to participate together in the outdoors, environmental education. And we'd like to be able to create, uh, while we want to have individuals type of activities. We want to also be able to focus on family activities at the park as well. And I think that bears well. Uh, this department has a long history of working with outdoor facilities and mm -hmm. programming and recreation. Have you um, had any input from citizens? We have. We've, uh, we held a uh, public meeting uh, on September the 19th uh, to discuss uh, the uh, ideas that our citizens had. It was very well attended. We've uh, received significant number of comments and uh, throughout our entire process that we will be going through and creating a master plan for the, pro uh, for the park, we will be uh, encouraging our citizens to participate and to continue to provide us feedback of what they would like to see out there for their vision of Explorer Park. Right. Has anything jumped out so far as, as a really great great idea is one thing risen to the top, so to speak? Uh, I wouldn't say that there's one idea. I think that there's a lot of common themes that we receive. Folks want to see some type of overnight accommodations, whether it's a campground or cabins there on the site. They want to see more activity in uh, regards to water with the Roanoke River. Uh, they also want to see just passive recreation opportunities, such as picnicking, uh, trails for hiking and biking, equestrian use. That's the general type things that uh, have been communicated with us. Right. Now, I'm going to go off topic a little bit here, mm -hmm. but when you mentioned passive recreation, I and help but think of the Greenway connection mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if when this is complete, mm -hmm. what will that do for our Greenway system? In the valley? Well, this is going to be just a very unique opportunity for the entire valley. We will be able to link up from Green Hill Park all the way through Roanoke County to Roanoke uh, City, City of Salem, Town of Vinton, all the way back into Roanoke County down to the Blue Ridge Parkway. And then now we will be able to link up to Explore Park. So you're looking at over 20 miles of Greenway Trail that our citizens will be able to use for for multiple purposes, whether they're out walking, biking, strollers, uh, just so many opportunities for people no matter what their age and ability is in terms of physical fitness. Right, that's great news, that's yeah. great news. That's yeah. I guess it's about a marathon, isn't it? It, it really is, and that's uh, that's been suggested, is that maybe uh, the Roanoke Valley needs to have a, a Greenway Marathon. Well, that would be a great thing to see. Mm -hmm. um, well, really, um, are, you know, are there any portions of the park that are open now? Right now, we consider our, the upper quad of, of Explorer Park open. That's there at the visitor center uh, where the Taubman building is, all the way over to Brew Tavern. We do have uh, the Subaru uh, mountain bike trail open. And then there's, uh, in, in addition, you can also uh, hike uh, through uh, some of the trails that are associated with the bike trail. And so right now, that's what we have open. We're right now working on plans to open up other parts of the park by next spring uh, for really hiking and biking. 
And what about river access? Is it still available? It is. River access is still available down at Root Trough Point. Uh, there's a parking lot there um, with a uh, boat put in uh, to where you can put your canoes and kayaks in, pull them out at that point, and uh, have a nice area to be able to uh, have a picnic lunch uh, after you get done with your river ride. That's great. Well, in the coming months, I know there'll be a lot of announcements, a lot of mm -hmm. developments. And where can people go to mm -hmm. find out more information about mm -hmm. what's being suggested, what's being mm -hmm. planned? Well, what we're planning is we have, uh, we're adding a, uh, an Explore Park tab uh, to the Runner County website under Parks, Recreation, and Tourism. So if you go to runnercountyva.gov and go to the uh, Parks, Recreation, and Tourism tab, you'll see a link for Explore Park, and that's where we'll have all of our updated information. That's great. Well, Doug, I really appreciate you coming out today and talking about Explore Park. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. Higher electric bills, sticker shock at the gas pump, energy can cost a ton, but it's easy to save money and give your budget a boost. Save hundreds of dollars in energy costs by doing just a little. An average household dedicates 11% of its energy budget to lighting. Using new lighting technologies can reduce energy use by 50 to 75%. One of the easiest and most cost-effective ways to cut energy bills is to replace conventional light bulbs with compact fluorescent lamps. They're more efficient and last 6 to 12 times longer. Remember, do a little, save a ton. Green Ridge offers healthy fun for everyone. They offer such an array of classes here that no matter what level of fitness you are or not, there's something for you. Green Ridge is a godsend to me personally. I said it's probably saved my life or I got back 10 or 15 years. I feel wonderful. My aches and pains are practically nil. And when I walk out of here, the most interesting paradox to me is that I feel totally energized. Get healthy at Green Ridge by daily admission or membership. Hi, I'm Anne Marie Green, Director of General Services for Roanoke County. With me today is Billy Weitzenfeld, who's with the Association of Energy Conservation Professionals. Welcome, Billy. Thanks well, thank for being you. with us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Sure. You all have been sponsoring the Green um, Living Energy Expo for 14 years. This is the 14th one. That's correct. This is our 14th annual. It'll be November 1st and 2nd at the Roanoke Civic Center. and. Uh, yeah, 14 years is a long time. It is a long time. Tell us a little bit about the event, what kind of vendors there are, what kinds of things there are for people to see and do there. Well, it's a free educational event. Uh, really, the purpose of the event is to showcase and highlight, highlight the importance of saving energy, being more efficient with our resources. Uh, we have a real variety of exhibits uh, related to that. Uh, we have uh, exhibits that are focused on renewable energy, uh, green building, energy efficient lighting, energy efficient appliances, latest technology and HVAC systems, and uh, water conservation, just a whole lot of different types of exhibits. And not only is it free, sometimes there's free things there from the exhibitors, aren't there? Yeah, there's a lot to, to offer the general public. Uh, and we have lots of activities for kids. It's a real family event. Uh, Friday and Saturday. We have special programs for kids on Friday, but uh, we have a youth area that's dedicated to uh, activities for the kids. What's going to be new this year? Well, one thing new is we're going to have some how-to demonstrations that we're excited about. Uh, we're going to show you how to weather strip a door and a window, how to wrap a water heater, how to seal an attic hatch. We're going to have a little how-to workshop on managing your thermostat better on energy efficient lighting and really the theme of the event this year is to take action. Mm -hmm. You know I um, always always felt that a programmable thermostat wasn't going to do me any good because I was just programming you know I got up in the morning turned it up went to bed turned it down and I got one last year and it just made a huge difference in my life it's just so convenient and actually the house is more comfortable with it. Yeah, it's one of those low-cost, no-cost investments that any homeowner can make, and it's really about making a decision to be more efficient in your home and taking action. Right, and weather stripping a window probably isn't that hard. That's, that's going to be a great demo. Uh, what about, I understand that there are some bicycles that people might win. Yes, uh, through a very generous sponsorship from Roanoke County, uh, we have two $500 gift certificates uh, from a local bike store here in Roanoke. Uh, and all you have to do is come to the event, register, and then we'll draw 
maybe your name at the end of the event and you can win one of these $500 gift certificates. That's a pretty nice bike, $500. Oh yeah, yeah, we, we, we first class all the way. <laughs> well, that's Roanoke County, we're first class yes. all the way too. Yes, definitely. So is there still room for vendors or sponsors if people are interested? Yeah, we're still uh, soliciting uh, exhibitors. Uh, we need more exhibitors. Uh, one of the challenges we have is making sure that uh, the exhibitors that are there represent what's current and what's relevant. Uh, and we also need sponsorships. Uh, you know, the event is free, admission is free, but it's not free to put it on. Right. So if there are businesses or organizations that could step forward and help us finance this event, we would really appreciate it. That would be great. It's a wonderful event. I've had fun every year. We've we've been there. The county has a booth. The city of Roanoke has a booth. Usually the town of Blacksburg. It, it's a lot of fun, and it, it's a good way to reach out to our citizens. It, it certainly is, and we hope that people will come. We need people to walk in the door because we guarantee that if you do, you're going to learn something, and you're going to go home and take action based on that. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Well, thank you very much. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Higher electric bills, sticker shock at the gas pump, energy can cost a ton, but it's easy to save money and give your budget a boost. Save hundreds of dollars in energy costs by doing just a little. As much as half of the energy used in your home goes to heating and cooling. You can save a ton by making sure your home is properly sealed and insulated against the elements. Caulk window and door frames, wiring and pipe penetrations, and anywhere air leaks. Weather strip around loose window sashes and doors. Remember, do a little, save a ton. Hi, I'm Dan O'Donnell, Assistant County Administrator, and I'm here today with Mr. Bill Hunter, who is the Director of Communications and Information Technology for Roanoke County. Thanks for being with us, Bill. Thanks for having me, Dan. Could you tell us about your department? I guess most people think it's computers, but it's much more than that. Could you tell us what, what you folks do? Sure. Communication and Information Technology is really divided into two halves. There's a communication half that takes care of the Emergency 911 Center and the mm -hmm. Public Safety Radio System. Then the information technology side takes care of the traditional IT work that supports both the county staff and the citizens. Mm -hmm. But you do the 911 center, you install equipment and vehicles, you do a whole lot of things. It's more than Sure, this. we have um, uh, approximately 85 professionals that support the uh, county and the citizens through both 911. A lot of people don't realize we do all our own installations for the uh, police cars here mm -hmm. in uh, Rona. And then uh, I think we really have some innovative use of technology that uh, is on display through our website and through some of the services that are available to the citizens. Yeah, it, it's kind of one of those departments that the public doesn't see directly but has a great impact on our operations. And the reason I'm talking to you today is to talk a little bit about some recognition your department has received both uh, at a national level and at the state level. First of all, you recently received a Digital County Award and you've received that award for the past 10 years. Could you tell us what that is? Digital Counties is a uh, survey of innovative use of technology across the nation. And uh, we traditionally compete in the uh, 150,000 or less population category mm -hmm. and have done really well over the last 10 years. Okay, can you tell us what the specific uh, criteria are? How do you win that award? Well, the Cities for, uh, Center for Digital Government and the National Association of Counties uh, sets the criteria for the awards. Mm -hmm. And they run the surveys and they evaluate the results of the surveys and put them into the appropriate categories and awards are pre presented from there. Were there any uh, particular new initiatives that uh, you used this year to win that award? Sure. Uh, we were recognized uh, by our new pictometry systems that we use and the other piece that I think was very successful was the uh, new website that our social services staff can use and maintain secure communications throughout the area that uh, helps folks serve the citizens better in, in social services area. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know what pictometry is. Could you tell us a little more about that? Pictometry are pictures that uh, you actually have aerial flyovers of the county and they uh, put these pictures together and one of the uses of them is, is in a 911 application actually. So if you have a call to your house 
folks in the 911 center can literally see a picture of your house uh -huh. to help direct fire and rescue personnel to where the nearest fire hydrant is. Right. Or maybe if there's fences that might prevent them from getting into your house. Most people don't realize that we have that kind of uh, technology and ability to, to zero in on specifics in the, in the uh, 911 center, so that's pretty, uh, pretty far advanced. Um, another award you just won, your department won, was the Governor's Award for Innovative Use of Technology. Can you tell us about that too? Yes, uh, we were honored last month at the uh, Commonwealth of Virginia IT Symposium. Uh, with the uh, Governor's Award, and it was really a collaborative effort between our department and community development. And what the need was, was inspectors out in the field needed to be able to communicate back here to uh, the administrative center in real time to update their inspection process and keep their paperwork accurate to speed the processes for the citizens. So working with our staff and their staff together, we put together a uh, virtual desktop environment that lets them log in from virtually anywhere in the county. And the big piece of that was if their connection is lost, all their work wasn't lost with mm -hmm. it. So once they reconnect, they're right back to, to doing what they did at the line they left off on. Well, that's quite a broad spectrum of things you do and awards you win. You go from uh, information technology upgrades in the 911 center all the way to helping inspectors in the field. It's a, it's a, and social services websites. It's a broad, broad department that does a lot of things. Um, and just like to say congratulations on your awards and thank you for being with us today. Thank you. We'll be right back. The town of Vinton is open for business and is committed to improving customer service to its citizens and contractors. In the past, you may have had to wait as much as a day to get a permit for plumbing, electrical, or mechanical work. But, but things, things have, have changed. changed. Now you can get over-the-counter permits in some cases before you walk out the door. We can even take credit card payments. This faster service is at no additional cost to the taxpayer. It's all part of the town's dedication to improving customer service. Find out more at VintonVA.gov. I'm Gray Craig and today I've got with me Officer Rick Crozier and he's going to explain a few things about the new uh, permitting process for buying and selling uh, secondhand building materials or scrap metal in, in Roanoke County. Rick, thanks for coming out today. Thanks for having me. Now I understand there have been some changes in the law recently. Um, when did this really come into effect? The state law mandated July 1st of 2013, uh, but a lot of the jurisdictions were unaware that these changes were made. Roanoke County has implemented theirs on September 10th of this year. Right. Well, um, tell us a little bit about, about this issue. What brought it about and what is the intent of the new regulation? The intent is pretty much to help law enforcement. Basically what happened is we were having a lot of thefts from uh, unused buildings and houses and things like that. People were going in stealing materials and they were recycling them and we didn't have any way to track it down. This new law enables us to have a better tracking documentation so we can better do an investigation if we need to. Right. Now, for our viewers, can you explain the difference real quick in secondhand building materials and scrap metal? I know there's been a lot of confusion. People are concerned about uh, scrap metal they may pick up or uh, that kind of thing. So. It, Give us a little bit of detail about that. What we're looking for in scrap, uh, the scrap metal we're talking about, secondhand building supplies, is more or less um, wiring, electrical fixtures, gas fixtures, pipes, um, you know, things like building construction type things, metal cans, lawn mowers, appliances like refrigerators, uh, stoves, they don't count, um, old lawn mowers. Um, different things like that, we will not, they're not considered to be the scrap metal that you need to permit for. Right, so pretty much I guess anything that's uh, connected to a house? Exactly. Is, is kind of a baseline you can go by? It is. Right, so vehicles, appliances, those things don't count. Right. Well, tell us a little bit about the process we've established in Roanoke County to get a, a permit for the average homeowner who might have some things laying around and uh, tell us how easy that is. Basically, it's real easy. We made it as simple as we can for Roanoke County. If you uh, deal with less than 600 pounds and you go less than 26 times a year to a recycling facility, you can go online or you can go by any of the library, county office buildings, police department, you can get a permit and you fill it out each time you go to the recycling center. It tells you exactly what you turned in, what materials you're bringing in. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything right now. 
Um, we just wanted to make sure that we had documentation as we go. Right. I understand now each trip a person takes, for example, if I should go in March and take a load from my house and I'll need a permit from the website, I get off and, and fill it out. Um, and also, if, uh, if I were to go a few months later, I wouldn't need a separate permit, is that correct? No, you do need a permit. Every time you take a load to the recycling facility, you need to go online and get that actual documentation and take with you. Great, great. I appreciate it. Um, well, tell us a little bit about uh, those who do collect more than 600 pounds and do uh, make more than 26 trips a year to a scrapyard. There's also uh, special permits that they can purchase. Uh, they go online, they, they get the permits, and um, they have a little bit longer duration and things like that. Uh, you can go on our website. Uh, you can go www.ronacountyva.gov.scrapmetal and get some more information if you have any questions. Great. Well, I really appreciate your time, Rick. And, no problem. Uh, we hope this clears up some confusion. I hope that uh, all of our citizens can find the website and the forms. There are, like I said, free and also available at uh, county libraries. They're available at the county attorney's office. A lot of the customer service counters across the county. Yep. Great. Thanks a lot. Thank Rick. you. Green Ridge offers healthy fun for everyone. I have four children, ages 20 to 7, and I like Green Ridge because there is something here for every single one of them. They can come here, they like to swim, like the game room, um, I like, you know, working out. You don't feel like you're walking to a gym where you just have to be a body trainer, they get to be subconscious of your body, because it is family. This is not a place just for exercise, it's a place for fun as well. Have fun at Green Ridge by daily admission or membership. My name is Lon Williams. I'm the uh, Parks Planning and Development Manager for Roanoke County Department of Parks, Recreation and Tourism. I'm also a landscape architect. Um, the Walwyn, Walwyn Park is a 48-acre park. came into our system around 1980. Uh, we have a lot of athletic facilities here, softball, baseball, soccer. Um, but we wanted to add something uh, more of a passive recreation, and that's what we've done in building this trail down here. Uh, Walwyn Park sees a, a lot of use. Uh, as far as athletics as well as folks using the new trail system here. Well, we applied for a grant from the Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation to build a loop trail in the lower portion of the park uh, around a pond that's here. And um, we com after a couple years, we, we completed that. It's about a, a two-thirds of a mile loop trail. And then what we're standing on now is the, the, the wetland trail that's in the park. It's about 200 feet long. A trail project was envisioned as kind of two pieces, what we call the upland trail, the gravel trail portion of it, and this wetland trail that we wanted to build out into the wetland on this viewing platform here so folks can observe what was going on in, in the wetland. Um, we had envisioned in the grant when we wrote the, uh, the, the budget estimate that this would be built by a contractor, that parks crews would build the upland, the gravel trail, and that a contractor would build the wetland trail. As we did the bidding for the wetland trail, we found out that we did not have the money in the budget to hire a contractor to build the wetland trail. So we started looking at ways that uh, parks crews could build this wetland trail um, at a substantial cost savings so we could make that work for the project budget. It was around that time we found this Diamond Pier Pen Foundation system out there. Um, that was a, a foundation supporting system for the wetland trail that could basically be constructed by park staff members um, at a, a much lower cost for both uh, labor and material. So this was the first time we had used this approach. Uh, I think it was the first time this uh, Diamond Pier Pin Foundation system had been used in Southwest Virginia maybe only a few times in Virginia. We actually ordered it from the West Coast. Um, so that's how we move forward with, with completing the wetland trail here and, and kind of making it fit our budget. 
It recently won um, a, uh, an award from, a, from the Virginia Association of Counties for 2013. Um, I believe 12 uh, uh, local governments uh, were uh, recipients of awards. Uh, we, we received an, uh, an achievement award, essentially, uh, in the parks and recreation category. So we feel, you know, we feel pretty happy that there were, there were only 12 recipients of this award, in, the, in, in the, this achievement award in the entire state, and that there were only two localities, that there, parks and rec departments, that received awards, and, and we were one of them. Our park staff members and crew members are pulled in many different directions, uh, ball field maintenance, mowing, uh, general maintenance of other types of infrastructure. So we had to kind of work around some of their other responsibilities to get th this project done. Uh, we, we began the project in uh, November of 2010. We finished it in February of 2012. There were times when we had to pull that cruise off the project to go do other things that, that came up and then come back to the project. Um, and I think it was sort of an education process for all of us involved to build the trail and the way we built it, to build this wetland trail, to use the diamond piers. Also, what is also, I mean, very unique, I, I don't, we hadn't done this before, we, we utilize um, the Sheriff's uh, uh, Department inmate crew to help us build the trail. Basically, we had been using them to help us mow grass during the, 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 the growing season, but right before that started, we needed some help out here, and they came out and helped us for several weeks build the trail. And I think, uh, I think those involved had a pretty good time doing it. So it was, um, it was a unique way to use their services. Uh, it saved us some money. It, uh, it, got, uh, it got those fellows out doing some work and enjoying the, 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 the sunlight and stuff. And it really contributed to, our, our, the, I think, the success of our project. When we completed the trail, we um, applied to the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries to designate this trail as a birding and, and wildlife trail, uh, which they did. So now we have a couple signs around here that, that shows that, that it's, it is, is a state uh, birding and wildlife trail. When you go on the, uh, the website for the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, there's a web link that takes you to the birding and, and wildlife trails and Walwyn Park can be uh, accessed from there. What's really neat about this, it's, it's, not, um, it, it's important for local residents to know that, but there's a lot of folks who travel through the area that are bird and, wild, and or wildlife enthusiasts, and they can look this up on the internet while they're traveling and see we have a birding and wildlife trail here and stop in and enjoy the park. I'm standing here talking about this, but many, many people went in to make this project a, a reality. Um, we got the grant money in 2007, right about the time the economy turned down, and, and we kind of had to put the project on hold a little bit because we didn't have crews available. We lost some, some staff members. Um, but the county leaders stuck with us. Um, all types of Roanoke County staff pulled together to make this happen. Most importantly, uh, the Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation hung with us. They gave us a couple extensions of our, uh, of our grant deadline, uh, which helped us make the project a reality. In the end, we had some cost overruns on the project, but uh, I was able to justify those overruns. And where our grant originally was for $57,000, we got an additional $11,000 from them for a total of $68,000 to cover uh, the cost of our, our materials. We actually had about $45,000 worth of Roanoke County labor in this project. Which, when you look at the cost of the materials in their labor, it was about a 55-45 ratio, 55% material cost, 45% labor cost. The grant itself was actually an 80-20 matching grant, so we really only had to put in 20%. So we showed uh, the Department of Conservation and Recreation that we had gone above and beyond our, our responsibility on the project, and they gave us additional funds to, to, to address our, our material cost overruns, which is sort of unheard of. So I think all in all it was just, um, we had to all pull together to get through the tough economy and to make this project work and I think in the end it's been a, a, a very good success story.